My exposure is close to P2A, Atlantic to, uh, from, say, U.S. Gulf, Panamax from U.S. Gulf to, to Asia. Should I hedge, based on historical movements, should I hedge a little bit more volume than index, a little bit less volume than index? These things are what you have to look into in order to be neutral. And out. If you fix, now if you buy FFA, when you fix your ship, then what? What do you do? Do you then sell the FFA back to the market? Or do you keep the FFA? A little bit back to the long short principle. I've touched upon it before that long freight, you know, you have the ship owners, you have the trading companies with excess comp uh, tonnage, and you have the, uh, the CNF buyers of cargo. On the short side, you have kind of the power producers, utilities, um, uh, importers uh, who, who buy on an FOB basis, trading houses, etc. So, back to the Panamax example. U.S. Gulf, CNF cargo. So what I've done here is that you see the index and then you see P2A, which is the front hole. You can see that on average it's always slightly higher than the index itself that you use to hedge. And then you'll see all the red dots, which are basically U.S. Gulf spot fixtures. See, some of them are slightly below, but don't forget that Outlayers usually has a reason for them. I mean, for instance, these two were both 1984 built. So what you see here, for instance, by, by doing this study, you get a differential between the basket and, and, and uh, the basket that you hedge with and the route that you're exposed to. In this system, by looking at uh, by 2008, you'll see that the basket is basically 27.5% lower than the normal P2A run. So, effect of hedging for a CNF buyer. I'll take you back to October. And a CNF contract is entered into for nine months where the freight element of the CNF contract is valued at $25,000 per day. You like the contract, you feel that you ha you're obliged to enter into this contract, but you think that freight will go down in the short run. That's your concern. So the CNF buyer, he has three cargoes. First loads in mid-November, then a cargo every three months. He therefore decides, because he thinks that freight will go down, that he has overpaid, that the CNF price was overpaid, he decides to sell 90 lots of Q1, 90 lots of Q, um, uh, Q2, and 90 days of Q3. Lots, days, that's exactly the same. So 90 days, that means that you basically do full, uh, full quarters on each of them. The price, that particular day, you can see all the different lines there. It shows the, 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 the Q1, Q2, and Q3 forward price. On, on every day for the period. And then the CNF buyer, you know, has some choices to do. I mean, should he sell all these contracts at the time of entering into this, uh, the, the CNF contract? Or should he wait a little bit? That comes back to management, you know, company management, which structure you want to put in place. And, and finding kind of a, a risk management structure that you're happy with and that you'll run with on a consistent basis. So, time goes by. His next cargo is available in, in February, or uh, the next cargo is, um, needs to be shipped in February. And the CNF buyer then confronts a couple of alternatives. Should he keep the FFA contract to, and let them price out, or should he buy it back at profit? We advise that when you fix your ship, you have no longer the need for the FFA hedge for that period, so you should close out the FFA position. Because if you do that, you remain neutral. 
the ship owner, if you look at it from the physical side and from the FFA side, the physical side, the charter is short shipping. When he fixes a ship, he's neutral. But then he has that long paper contract he bought three months back that he needs to close out in order to remain neutral. So basically, if the FFA trader or the CNF hedger sold at $25,000 and decided to buy it back at $15,000, what in effect is happening is that he takes a short position indicated by the black line. If the market goes to $30,000, he's lost $5,000 on that uh, vertical axis. If it goes to $20,000, he made $5,000. He would then, if he bought it back at 15, have a long position that neutralizes the short position, and as an effect, he achieve a profit of $10,000. The FFA market is very dynamic. You can go in and out exactly when you want. What if the freight rates increased? Well, it comes back to the proper risk management. Some months, if you have a long CNF contract, some months you will lose, some months you will gain. But on average, you will have somewhat predictable freight costs going forward. An example of the FOB buyer. FFA can absolutely give the grain importer greater control, or soybean importer greater control of, of uh, the company's hedging program, because it can dynamically hedge every cargo using futures or options, whatever they want to do. So this was what I was touching, about, uh, touching upon earlier, that before fixing, you know, the physical position is that the, the, um, the charter is short physical freight. So what does he do? Well, he buys the FFA, them to become neutral. But after the fixing, three months later, he fixes his ship so he's neutral on the physical side. He, hasn't, he has no need for that freight, uh, the shipment anymore because he's already fixed the ship. But he still has that long paper position that he needs to close out by selling it. So to turn it around from a typical FOB buyer's point of view, this is this year in the dismal times of January. The FOB buyer then had the opportunity to fix a Panamax at $4,000 per day. You'll see up here with the black and the, the red line that, that the, the March and the Q2, the March is the black line, Q2 is the red line, um, we're trading at high levels. People, that means that traders, I mean everyone in the FFA market believe that rates would come up a little bit from, from the very, very low level of, of January. So, FOB buyer, he sits there in January and is now concerned that market will raise. When I say market, I mean, of course, the freight market will raise from the current levels when the next cargo become available, uh, the next cargo is actually in March and April. And because he has no freight arrangement in place, he knows that these cargos will come out, so he's short freight. In order to mitigate that risk, he decides to buy March and April to hedge, uh, sorry, March and Q2 to hedge himself. So he buys, he decides to buy 30 lots or 30 days of March contract at $8,000 per day, the black line, and 90 days of Q2 at $12,500 per day. The reason why he does that is that he's very concerned that rates will increase. And the whole thing is that if rates increase, the bottom part there is that he would then profit on his FFA position, but at the same time he has to pay more for his physical fixing. So the net effect is that he has somewhat control over where the total package will be. So beginning of March, the physical